Why are you being so stubborn? There seems to be a lot of discussion over the younger antagonists of the Karate Kid movies. Who would win in a fight? Which one is the best? In fact, a lot of you have asked in the comments, is Mike Barnes the best fighter in the LaRusso movie trilogy? Or would Johnny or Chosen beat Mike Barnes? Keep in mind that any or all of these fighting scenarios could happen in future seasons of Cobra Kai. So today, we're going to look at how these characters would stack up in a fight. I'm Ken Cole. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And I want to hear who you think is the best fighter in the comments. So today, I'm actually going to look at the top six fighters to face Daniel in the first three Karate Kid movies. We have the Cobras, Bobby, Tommy, Dutch, and Johnny, all from Karate Kid 1. Then we have Chosen from Part 2, and then of course, Mike Barnes from Part 3. They all lost to Daniel, except Bobby, which we'll get back to. The reason why this is such a debate among fans is that we never saw any of these characters fight each other. The closest we got was Dutch, Tommy, Bobby, and Johnny from Part 1. Was that Jimmy? I don't know. Anyway, the Cobras just fought in the same tournament, and we didn't see them fight each other. But they all fought Daniel. So we're going to try to figure out their skill level by how they did against Daniel. Before we get to Chosen and Mike Barnes, let's try to narrow the field a bit by just looking at the Cobras from Karate Kid 1. The tough part here is that all of them, except for Bobby, were beaten by Daniel, who won the whole tournament. The first to be eliminated by Daniel was Tommy. Get him a body bag! Yeah! Right. We don't see him fight much, but he seems intense and direct without much flourish. First kick is a little wonky, and he definitely looks anxious and angry, like he can't keep his cool. He has a great losing face, though. Next up is Dutch, and this guy oozes attitude especially after the locker room intimidation of Daniel. Hey, I'm talking. Come on, come on, make a move. Hey, save it for the ring. Now, Dutch has a lot of fans, and he's a great character. But how is he as a fighter? We don't see much of the fight, but he seems really cocky as he bounces up to the line, and he doesn't bow to Daniel. Kind of like Mike Barnes. I said bow. He nails Daniel with a crescent kick to the face, keeps up the cockiness, then goes in close with a punch and gets kicked by Daniel. So he seems like he has the skill, but maybe too much attitude and overconfidence to be the best Cobra at this tournament. Then we have Bobby. Ah yes, Bobby. I want him out of commission. But Sensei, I can beat this guy. I don't want him beat, but I'll be disqualified. We actually see a lot of Bobby fighting in this movie, and he's really good. He wins in Cobra Kai class. And we see him win twice in the tournament with authority and style before fighting Daniel. He makes it to the semifinals where he just has to beat Daniel and he'd face Johnny for the championship. But we never get to see if he's better than Johnny because Kreese wants Daniel out of commission. Which gets Bobby ejected from the tournament. Which is tragic because this could have been Bobby's year to win it all. And then there's Johnny. We see him fight three times before Daniel, including a semifinal match against Daryl Vidal. Johnny just shuts him out. So Johnny's definitely a great fighter and seems to have made it to the final match with ease, possibly without allowing a point scored against him. During Bobby's fight with Daniel, Bobby had briefly disabled Daniel's leg with surgical precision. So Daniel is fighting Johnny in an injured state. Even with the leg injury, Daniel immediately scores two points against Johnny. Which could be the first two scored against him in the whole tournament. Daniel draws blood, which sends Johnny back to his sensei. What are your sensei? Then Kreese tells him to sweep the leg. Basically to take advantage of Daniel's injury, which shocks Johnny because it's a cheat move, but it works. Johnny gets a point. Then Johnny gets another legit point. Then they chase each other and circle a bit. Daniel knocks down Johnny. Then Johnny hits the injured leg. Some great blocking from Daniel. And then Johnny nails Daniel in the face. He doesn't get a point. It's just a really cheap shot. Then Johnny drops his elbow into the back of Daniel's injured knee. Which is an illegal move. Definitely cheating. But he gets off with a warning. Then with the score tied 2-2, two to two, Daniel uses the crane kick to win.
So who's the best fighter of all the original Cobras since they all fought Daniel? It's actually a tougher call than you would think. Johnny made it to the final round, but all the other Cobras were eliminated or disqualified by Daniel too. Johnny appeared to go the furthest against Daniel, but he fought against an injured Daniel and came really close to losing immediately. The others fought against an uninjured Daniel. So here's what I would say. Tommy looked the shakiest in his fight, and he seemed to have trouble keeping calm and collected, so I'm taking him out of contention. He's not as mature a fighter at this point. Dutch looks like he has skill, style, and could be a great fighter, but his cockiness probably is keeping him from being a champion in 1984. Johnny is a very strong fighter, a returning champion, and we can see that skill in his fights, but he really struggled against Daniel, who at that point had only trained with Miyagi for two to three months. Compared to the years of training Johnny received. But think about Bobby for a second. Don't let his relative nice guy demeanor fool you. He was a very strong fighter from what we saw. When Chris says, I want him out of commission. Bobby says, but Sensei, I can beat this guy. And he might have been right. The only time we see Bobby fight Daniel, he lands a beautiful flying sidekick that completely catches Daniel off guard. And Daniel had 100% mobility at that point and couldn't manage to dodge or defend himself. Compare that to an injured Daniel scoring two quick points on Johnny. Think about what Bobby might have done had Kreese allowed him to fight a fair match. All signs indicate that he could have beaten Daniel and dethroned Johnny as All Valley Champion. So I'll say Johnny and Bobby are both in contention, but I suspect Bobby is the dark horse that could surpass Johnny. Next we have Chosen from Karate Kid Part 2. And Chosen is fascinating because he also studied the same style as Daniel, Miyagi-Do, under his uncle Sato. We don't see him fight for most of the movie except for some cheap shots. What is Sato? Hey, man! And we see him dominate some military students while teaching a class. Daniel takes a shot at his crotch, which catches him off guard. <laughs> then because Miyagi won't fight Sato, Chosen trashes the Miyagi family dojo and dominates Daniel with a spear, so he knows how to fight with weapons. When Miyagi arrives and tries to protect Daniel, Chosen strikes Miyagi with a spear <laughs> and becomes the only Karate Kid villain to land a hit on Mr. Miyagi, but it's brief. Then we get to the Obon dance, where Chosen fights Daniel. Now Daniel is more experienced than he was in the 1984 All Valley Tournament. This is about seven months later, and we see that Miyagi has been regularly training with Daniel. <laughs> this fight is very different from the All Valley, however, because as Miyagi says, It's not tournament. It's for real. This is a fight to the death, uncharted territory for Daniel and, I assume, Chosen. Different emotions are at play that might affect fighting style. Now we fight to death. But how does Chosen do against Daniel? After throwing Kumiko to the ground, he lunges at Daniel and lands a punch to the face. <laughs> Defends against Daniel's kick, throws him to the ground, and tries to stomp him. It might have been over for Daniel if Kumiko didn't wrap her scarf around Chosen's neck. <laughs> then Chosen and Daniel get into an exchange where Daniel lands a couple of hits. <laughs> before Chosen throws him into the statue. Daniel tries for the crane kick, which doesn't work. But then lands an elbow to Chosen's face. Chosen nails Daniel in the face. Daniel then dodges a flying sidekick, a lesson he must have learned from Bobby last year, before Chosen blocks and lands a punch to the gut. After successfully blocking, Daniel lands a punch and several kicks before Chosen elbows Daniel on the side. Daniel flips Chosen, but then Chosen comes in with a string of blows and flips Daniel. Then Daniel lands a chain of blows before Chosen breaks it with a hit to the face. Then Chosen pummels Daniel's face with more kicks, and they're both looking pretty beat up. Then Daniel pulls out the secret move, the drum technique, and honks Chosen's nose. So this was definitely the longest, most sustained fight in the Karate Kid movies. And while Daniel did defeat Chosen, 
Chosen had the upper hand for a good chunk of the fight against an initially uninjured Daniel. But Daniel was able to sometimes defend against Chosen and successfully land attacks of his own. One reason Chosen might not be at his full potential in this fight is that he seems ruled by anger, which might have hampered his ability to fight level-headed to his full ability. Finally, we get to Mike Barnes. If you've seen my video, Mike Barnes, Master Bully, and there's a link if you haven't, you know that Daniel had a really tough time with him. Nice kick, Better? Good. Mike is featured in martial arts magazines as the tournament terror. Karate's bad boy, Mike Barnes. So he isn't just a regional champion like Johnny. Sorry, Johnny. Mike Barnes enters the picture after Daniel returns from Okinawa. Terry Silver hires him to defeat Daniel and he's a level-headed, business-like fighting machine. When he faces Daniel, Daniel is at his most experienced, having survived a fight to the death with Chosen. Even so, Mike Barnes wipes the floor with Daniel. Mike Barnes intimidates not out of anger, but as a calculated tactic. Daniel can't even defend himself for the whole movie, except for briefly deflecting Mike once in Miyagi's backyard, and then at the very last move of the tournament. The first encounters are real fights, there are no rules, and Mike dominates. There's nothing you got that I can't counter, your karate's a joke. Then at the All Valley tournament, there are supposed to be rules, but Mike keeps using illegal moves to keep the score even, per Terry Silver's request. Keep the score 0-0, zero, zero. pulverize him for the full three minutes, then in sudden death, you get the point, you win. I mean, I could go point by point on this fight, but it's pure Mike Barnes domination completely one-sided. If it weren't for Terry's insane plan of pain, I want him to experience pain. Mike would have won easily and quickly. Daniel's special move was the kata, which somehow messed with Barnes, and Daniel won in sudden death. So, who's the best? Do you already have a favorite? <laughs> My top four are Johnny, Bobby, Chosen, and Mike Barnes. Again, we can only compare them by their skill and how they fought against Daniel at the time they fought him. These rankings aren't set in stone and the results could be different if we saw them all fight at a later time. We also should take into account Daniel's relative level of skill, experience, and health. Also remember that Daniel tended to win by pulling out special moves, and there are only so many of those. So, by everything we've seen, third place goes to Johnny. Sorry, Johnny fans, but at the 1984 All Valley, Johnny really struggled against an injured and inexperienced Daniel, and he almost lost right away. And the only reason he was able to keep up with Daniel was by sometimes illegally targeting his weak leg. Second place goes to Chosen, who manages to control much of his fight with Daniel, even though Daniel is more experienced than at the 1984 All Valley Tournament. And Daniel was able to match Chosen in some exchanges. In another situation, and after addressing his anger issues, which it looks like he's done in Cobra Kai, Chosen may rank higher. But based on what we've seen in this 1985 fight, we can't quite give him the top spot. Then the number one spot goes to Mike Barnes. This guy is a level-headed, experienced fighting machine, inside and outside of the tournament. He's already achieved national recognition in magazine articles. He completely dominates Daniel after Daniel won a fight to the death and is at his highest level of experience. Even Chosen couldn't completely control his fight with Daniel the way Mike Barnes does. And Mike would have won quickly if Terry just let him fight his own way. And it's a good bet that 1985 Mike Barnes could have beaten everyone else. But wait a second, what about Bobby Brown? From everything we've seen, he had a great shot at beating both Daniel and Johnny. He immediately executed a beautiful flying sidekick with precision that injured Daniel. In contrast, Johnny immediately allowed two quick points to be scored by Daniel. Bobby had a much better temperament than Chosen, which might have given him an edge in a fight with Chosen, and it's unknown how he might have met the challenge of Mike Barnes. But I think all fans need to finally recognize Bobby for the great fighter he is. Because he sacrificed his chance to be champion for Kreese's insane wishes, we'll never know whether Bobby Brown was perhaps the greatest fighter to face Daniel LaRusso. What do you think? Let me know in the comments who you think the best fighter is. Who would be the best fighter right now? And could we see these characters fight each other in the future? 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.